The French Bulldog has become the most popular dog breed in the UK and is the fourth most popular dog breed in the US. There's also a Bulldog called Zaza that's just won the world's ugliest dog competition. So what's the problem? Well, I think we need to talk. Hi, I'm Dr. Alex from Our Pets Health, helping you and your pet to live a healthier, happier life. And I just wanted to give some comments on these developments. Now, I've spoken before about the issues or the potential issues we have with our flat-nosed dog breeds, our brachycephalic dog breeds. So that's our, our pugs, our French bulldogs, um, our bulldogs and the like. So any breed that's got a really squashed nose. And you know, I'll, I'll put a link up here um, and in the description you can, can watch that, that video. The problem is, is that these breeds are much more likely to develop a whole heap of problems, so breathing problems, skin problems, um, joint problems, to name but a few. And the other problem is, is that a lot of a lot of us as owners aren't recognising these things as an issue. So we think that our dogs snorting and snoring is is cute and it's normal, but it's not. It's a sign that these dogs they simply cannot breathe and. If a dog can't breathe, then there's no way that you can tell me that their welfare is optimal. Now, they might appear happy, but they may not be as energetic, they might not be as playful, um, and they might not be able to do all the things that they really want to do. And they're excellent characters, don't get me wrong, like they're, they're fantastic, they're super friendly, they're super social, they're very gentle in nature, they're, their temperament and their character is fantastic, but their bodies don't allow them to express their full nature in a large number of cases. Now of course not every dog in these breeds is going to to have all of these problems but the actual proportion of dogs that do is very high and and I personally think it's unacceptably high. If we take a, a look at Zaza, our bulldog who won the ugliest dog competition then um, and I'll leave a comment, uh, a link down below to um, to an article and, and to pictures. You can see that she's got massive shoulders. Her elbows are turned outwards, so her joints and her legs are, are deformed. And that's going to leave, uh, you know, she's guaranteed to have arthritis. You know, no question, no argument. She's going to have arthritis. Her mobility is going to be compromised, and she's going to be painful because of her conformation. She's also got the most massive tongue you can imagine and you know that's something that we see with these guys so they've got very short noses their bones have got shorter and less but the soft tissue within their mouth within their throat is still the same so everything's kind of squashed in their airways are, are really tiny so in some cases with these bulldogs and I've certainly had it you're you're when you come to anesthetize them you're putting a tube down into their windpipe and effectively for a bulldog who's gonna be what 20 25 kilos if they're overweight they're going to be more you're putting a tube that is the same size as a large cat tube you can't get anything bigger down so you know that's just unacceptable really we're breeding a lot of problems into these guys and you know with our French Bulldogs being the most popular dog breed in the UK and and fourth most popular and rising in in the US and you know in other parts of the world as well they're becoming really popular without good recognition of these problems without people being aware of the things to look out for then things are only going to get worse we're only going to see more dogs that are suffering and of course I'm not picking on the brachycephalics in particular I'm not saying that no other breed has got problems of course they do we know our dachshunds for example have got a, a massively higher incidence of um, joint disease in their back so they get slipped discs. Our West Highland White Terriers, our Westies, they'll get itchy skin. But the tragic thing with our brachycephalics is not only their increasing popularity, um, and it's un like I say, it's understandable why because of their character, but it's also because these breathing problems especially affect dogs at a really young age. So with our Dachshunds, with our um, German Shepherds or Labradors and their hips and arthritis, you know, they often affect these dogs later on in life. So they're, they're healthy when they're young, but um, yeah, become unwell later on in life. And not that that's acceptable, but with our brachycephalic breeds, they're, they're becoming ill. They're their quality of life is compromised sometimes from the very moment they're born but certainly in at, at a very young age they're they're going to get you know 
compromising problems um, that really have a knock-on effect on their quality of life and in some cases simply their ability to ability to survive the other thing we see is that there's no way that some of these dogs can actually give birth naturally so if you look at Zaza you'll see the, sim the size of her head the size of her shoulders there's no way that that can a puppy that shape could fit through the pelvis and be delivered naturally so we've actually we're actually breeding dogs that are unable to give birth naturally so just think about that for a minute that that's surely not right um, and it just reminds me of something that I saw on Crufts this year that the at the British Bulldog stand which by the way I think it won the best stand at Crufts which is something else to think about but their comment was that actually it's not that they can't give birth it's that the reason that they have so many cesareans is because of a uh, lack of availability of vets to do after hours work which is ludicrous given that all vets in the UK are required to provide an after hours service now they don't have to do it themselves they can um, provide uh, they can arrange that to be provided by a third party but all vets in the UK are required to provide an after hours service to their clients so quite how um, that bulldog stand can make that claim and a poster saying that and 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 say there's not a problem with the breed I, I, I just words words fail me so there are things that we can do as owners if you really would like a, a brachycephalic by all means go for it but go for it with open eyes choose a breeder who is breeding for health choose a breeder who's looking to put their nose back on their dogs that's going to make their risk of breathing problems less it's going to make their risk of skin infections because the skin folds less if their conformation is better it's going to make their risk of developing arthritis less so there are definitely things we can do and that's what the um, the campaign hashtag breed to breathe was all about and is all about it's about raising awareness letting people know what problems that their future dogs might face or their current dogs might face and what we can do to go about it make sure that you keep your um, keep your dog a healthy weight obesity is a major contributing factor to breathing difficulty um, so there are all kinds of things that we can we can do to try and reverse this you know worrying and very upsetting trend so you know you might look at the picture of Zaza and have a little chuckle but when you actually think about it when you think that she is the result of what we as humans have done in breeding our dogs we're not breeding them to be healthy in some cases we're breeding them to to live a life of crippling pain or being unable to breathe and that just can't be right can it anyway that's it from me for today um, yeah if you found this interesting if you've got any comments about anything I've talked about then please leave me a comment down below and get in touch you can hit me up on Twitter at our pets health as well and you know share this with your friends share this with anyone who you know who either has a squash nosed or brachycephalic dog you know to let them know that there are things that they can do um, or share it with someone who's thinking about getting one just so that they know that they need to look out for a few things when it comes to when it comes to choosing what puppy is best for them um, yeah also check out my other video all about brachycephalics which I'll link up here and until next time I'm Dr Alex from our pets health because they're family <laughs> <laughs>